If you pulled Mona on the recent raid up banner, you're probably looking for a team to fit her into. Well, luckily, Mona is a pretty versatile unit. Players often restrict her to free support, but one of the benefits of Mona is that she amps anyone and anything, and because of that, she can be played in tons of other teams as well. So today, I'm going to be going over four of Mona's best teams, with each one being a different core playstyle. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to leave a like down below so YouTube knows the video doesn't suck, and consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost to 100k subscribers, and it would be awesome if we could get there before the end of summer. With all that being said, my name is Braxophone, and let's talk about some of Mona's best teams. The first team we're going to be talking about today is the Raiden Hypercarry team. Raiden Hypercarry is a team that revolves around two things, mega buffing Raiden to hit high damage, and using Raiden to battery her supports so she can do it again. For someone like Mona who needs a lot of energy recharge, Raiden helps supply some extra energy to her to help with burst up time, meaning you should never really have issues. In this team, you're going to want to put Mona on Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, because it will give Raiden a massive attack buff when following the right rotation. Ideally, you're going to use Raiden's skill and place Bennett's circle to where enemies either don't get hit by it or are able to have an Electro Aura still. That way, you can double swirl with Kazuha to buff Electro and Pyro at the same time while debuffing those same resistances before using either Raiden or Kazuha's burst. Now with that being said, sometimes Raiden's skill applies Electro over top of the Pyro anyways, and in that case you don't really have to worry about the double swirl happening because it will just happen. If you're in Bennett's circle and someone has Electro on them, you're going to get the double swirl, and it saves you so much time. Whenever you land with Kazuha, you're going to use his burst and that's going to prioritize Pyro. It's going to to infuse Pyro, and then you want to follow it up with Mona's skill and burst to give yourself the omen damage bonus against enemies. After that, you swap back to Raiden, pass Thrilling Tails buff to her, and when she uses her burst, the first hit will deal extremely high damage, and as her burst continues, it will sort of trickle down over time. Now a huge part of this is the overload damage you're going to be getting from Raiden and Kazuha, because Kazuha infused Pyro, which means that you're going to be consistently overloading enemies that are within that circle, and that will be in addition to your Raiden damage. Now though Mona can be used in nuke teams for bomb boss one-shots, this team is my personal favorite for hitting huge numbers, because it feels so seamless. Rotations are smooth, it's really easy to play, and it tears through content extremely fast. Now with enemies that have downtime, because it can take a while to finish your buffing rotation and start your burst window, sometimes you need to start the rotation early before the boss even becomes targetable. One example is the Cryo Cube, where you need to pre-plan a little bit to get your damage out. And realistically, you can beat the Rune Snake with this team, but because it takes so much setup and because the Rune Snake's only hittable for about half a second, I don't really recommend recommend taking it all the way to that boss room. Overall, this team is one of Mona's best, and if you have the necessary characters, i definitely give it a try. If your Sing Shaw is absent or occupied, you may be lacking a Hydro character for Taser. Well, luckily, Mona can actually add a decent amount to Taser comp. Taser typically operates by having Fischl deal Electro damage and Battery Beto, Beto dealing incredibly high Electro damage that chains to multiple enemies, Sing Shaw applying Hydro for Electro Charge reaction damage, and also dealing high single target damage, and Sucrose dealing high Electro and Swirl damage while also reapplying those elements onto enemies to activate Electro Charge reactions. That was a lot of words, but basically everything works to together seamlessly to create a team that is able to hit multiple enemies very very quickly and consistently. Now something that not a ton of people know is that when you place Sucrose's burst and enemies have Electro and Hydro on them, if one of them steps in the middle of the burst, because that's how Sucrose's burst picks up elements, it will prioritize picking up Hydro over Electro, which means that even though Mona's taunt could be down for a moment, Sucrose's burst can still apply more Hydro in that downtime. There are tons of things working in unison to deal high damage, and though this team is strictly worse than the Singshaw variant, Mona's burst will allow your Fischl, Beto, and Sucrose to deal higher damage for a time. Mona's taunt doesn't really have amazing hydro uptime, but it'll allow you to activate Electro Charge a few times and keep enemies off you temporarily. And on top of that, you can give Mona Thrilling Tails and Noblesse to give Beto a massive attack buff in her burst. Now, if you have Yalan or just want to keep using Singshaw, you can replace Beto with them for more hydro damage and application, but just be aware that the Mona variant is worse than the standard Taser. Though it works fairly well and can clear most content, this variant of Taser should be saved for if you're using Singshaw elsewhere or if you just don't have him. Overall though, it's still pretty dang strong just by the nature of the characters in the team, and it's a pretty fun way to play Mona. 
The third team I want to show you is a super fun team that's pretty unique to Mona. The Forward Vape team for Mona features Mona, Bennett, Kazuha, and Xiangling. Forward Vape for Mona is incredibly strong, but it has a pretty high skill ceiling. It takes advantage of Bennett's attack buff, Kazuha's damage buff, resistance shred with Theridus and Venner, pyro application, and a combination of Xiangling's pyro application and damage to create Mona charged attack nukes, all while still dealing solid Xiangling damage. Because Mona is attacking fairly slow, it ensures that every single charged attack can vape for double damage. In this setup, Mona is built like a damage dealer with attack or EM, hydro damage, and crit, with EM being better for her personal damage most of the time. If you use the Wid Sith, you're able to get EM, attack, and damage buffs from it once every other rotation, which will massively amp Mona's damage up. On top of that, Mona's bubble pop will deal massive damage, and if you can get the vaporize off, it'll be way bigger. If you want to maximize damage, you'll want to place Mona Taunt, Kazuha Skill, Bennett Burst and Skill, Kazuha Burst, Mona Burst, and then spam charged attacks until the enemies are dead. Now you can actually use Xiangling Burst in here too, but it'll take away a high damage Mona charged attack, which is technically lowering team damage in that instance. After that, you can repeat a similar process. You're going to want to go to Mona Skill, Kazuha Skill, Bennett Burst, then Xiangling Burst, followed up by Mona Burst and charged attacks. Because this team has so many different ways to apply Pyro, it doesn't really hurt to use them together like Kazuha Burst and Xiangling Burst. But if you want more consistent damage with an extra Mona Vaporize, you'll want to hold Xiangling's Burst for time purposes. Purposes. Because again, using Xiangling's burst will take up a second or two of your time, and Mona's omen will only last for five seconds after the bubbles popped. This team is one of my personal favorites because there's not a lot of hydro units in the game currently that want to be built for forward vaporize, meaning hydro on pyro. Most of them are used in reverse vaporize, which Mona can be used in, but this one's a lot more fun. The last team I'm going to be showcasing today is a team that you are probably already aware of if you are involved in theory crafting or just play meta at all. This is going to be a freeze team. Now generally, the go-to team is Morgana, featuring Ganyu, Venti, Mona, and Diona. However, some players replace Diona with Rosaria or Ayaka to try to force more damage against frozen enemies. After all, who needs healing when the enemy can't even hit you? The reasons that the team works are 1. Cryo characters and freeze are both busted, and 2. Mona's bubble can't be popped on frozen enemies. There has to be an enemy with cryo on them first, but when you use Mona's burst, if the bubble is what freezes them, it can't pop until either 8 seconds have passed, or the enemies get unfrozen. The reason is that if you're hitting an enemy that's already frozen with something that's cryo or hydro, it's not going to affect their poise or stagger them at all, and the bubble can only pop if they take some damage to them that could affect their poise or stagger them. After the bubble pops, you still have 5 seconds of omen debuff left. That's why I opt to apply cryo, use venti burst to infuse it with cryo, and then follow it up with Mona's burst and skill. Now you have two different ways of running Mona in a freeze setup. You can either build her for personal damage and uptime, or you can build her with Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers to buff your main carry. I usually go for Thrilling Tales because it passes a massive attack bonus over to my Ganyu, and then I use her burst which will snapshot that attack bonus and keep it for the entire duration. But since Ganyu's burst icicles have a small AoE of damage, they can actually hit multiple enemies at a time if they're all next to each other. So if you use it before Venti's burst, you can guarantee that they're going to take massive damage from Ganyu's burst. In that case, Thrilling Tales is still pretty good if you choose to do it that way, but it's not super necessary either way. It really depends on the content and how built your Mona is, whether or not you're going to get more value out of Thrilling Tales or building her as a DPS. But just to reiterate, uptime is the most important thing in a freeze team. You have to make sure that you have her burst up on cooldown and that you're constantly using her taunt as often as possible. Otherwise, the freezing part of the team doesn't really happen and Mona loses a lot of her value. You also can just run a standard freeze team if you don't have all the five stars. The main thing is just that you want to make sure that you have Mona, an animo unit to shred cryo and hydro resistance, and two cryo units. Rosaria is really strong here. Shenha is also an option if you have her, and worst case, you can always go for someone like Kaya, who's still a really good unit and totally viable even in endgame because his damage is actually pretty dang high. Freeze is a super broken team comp, and though it's not amazing for this abyss specifically, cryo units are so strong that you can probably make it work anyways. With all of that being said, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my best Mona Teams video. I really enjoyed researching and trying out all of these teams, and if you find one that works for you, let me know in the comments below. Also, consider checking out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Braxophone. We usually do the recording and testing for these Spiral Abyss runs there, but also there's tons of other great games we'll be trying out here pretty soon, like Tower of Fantasy and probably Zenless Zone Zero as well. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.